Hi guys, how are you? Hey Tom. Good, they're, good, they're, good. They're all, they're all wearing jackets that I you. wish I had. I really. Oh, Tom brought his guitar. God love him. Just say something, Tom. No, you me. don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. Uh, I'm going to have uh, at the end of this year after touring. Yeah. I'm having a bonfire in my backyard, <laughs> and the fuel for the fire is just this jacket. I expect it to burn for about 36 hours. <laughs> So I think I think congratulations on 25 years of Thank Black you. and the Rodeo Kings. Thank you, um, <coughs> Colin. I'll go to you on this. You guys are all busy doing your own things. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But what what keeps you coming back? Well, you know, for me, it's it's the greatest blessing to be in this band. It totally came about as a result of serendipity throwing us together for the result of whatever else was going on in our lives. We kind of needed each other. And it's been like the safe haven for the last 25 years. Yeah. You don't want to get away from that. When you say that, a safe haven from what? Like, uh... um, In a lot of ways, just the a place where you can play music the way that you want to, where you can work at it and try and get better at it. And the greatest thing is because this whole thing has come about as a result of our love of Willie P. Bennett's music. To some degree, you focus away from yourself. Right. You focus towards something mm -hmm. else when you do this. Yeah. And and I think almost all these people are better when they do that, you know? <laughs> Steven, so yeah, look, can we talk about Willie P for a second? Sure, I'd love to. Um, I, I, I only got into Willie P. Bennett in a very roundabout way, because Willie P. Bennett, if you don't know, is an iconic, incredible Canadian mm -hmm. singer, songwriter, who I saw when he was like playing with Fred Eaglesmith. Like, yeah. I, I didn't know anything about him, and I remember somebody, it might have been Tom, saying, hey, you know, that guy's really good on yeah. his own, and I had no idea. Yeah. Can you just give us the... Yeah, well, I mean, um, Colin would know more about Willie, but my introduction to him was when I was 17, and my sister brought the album Hobo's Taunt home because she heard I was playing guitar, and I was still living in Ireland. And it went in the collection along with, you know, The Clash and ABBA and whatever. And uh, it was just this this great Canadian songwriter for me. What I loved even then was it was hard to peg exactly where he was coming from musically you know i wasn't thinking so much folk or country but it seemed to just exist in his own world and right. uh i've you know i slowly got to meet him and he was a very generous guy he he was always helping out younger performers and so you know that was my connection with him is he yeah. basically gave me a key to his flat and said whenever you want to stay here Come on in, you know where the laundry is and the linen, and make yourself up, uh, you know, the couch. And so he became kind of a a mentor for me. So was it then, Tom, <clears throat> about returning the favor? I saw you raise your hand. Oh, because he helped me. He was like the first guy. I always wanted to be a folk singer, and I still do. Uh, so we'll see how that goes in the next twenty years, Tom. No, he was a guy that said, "Hey, man, you know, I want you to get up on stage and play." You know, he gave me a chance. He it was um, it was Willie P. Bennett and Stan Rogers and Brent Titcomb, David Whiffen, who were the guys that said, "You know, they just they didn't necessarily see any talent in me, but they definitely saw a desire." And I think that that is the greatest thing that Willie did for so many people yeah. is he opened the door of possibilities to other artists he also taught us to be dead serious about yep. your art but not, not about, about yourself, about yourself. <laughs> yeah yeah it's a funny thing because will really um he he made certain sacrifices because i don't think there's any kind of guidebook I mean, there still isn't, but there really yeah. wasn't yeah. in 1978 or 1981 or 1975 as to how to get through it. He just knew that he wanted to be a better musician mm -hmm. and that he didn't want to be messing around. Yeah. He wanted to do it. So when did you guys realize that this had the potential to be more than just a tribute band to Willie P. Bennett? I'm going to start by saying honestly, and this was no, you know, no bull, but really I felt it right away. Honestly, I, I remember being in the studio with these guys making higher hurting. And if you could have heard the pre-roll on those those first tracks that we recorded, you would have heard me going, what key is it in? Two, three, and we were in. Like, honestly, it was and 25 so... years later, <laughs> if you listen Still to it, about the same way. Say, what key is it in? <laughs> but it was, it was magical right away. It really was, in, in a very cliched way. I mean, I grew up singing harmonies in my family, and, and so it was an easy transition. Um, but I just thought it was, I thought there was something great right off the bat. So how do you how do you finagle that you're all living away? I mean, Stephen, you're in Victoria now, yeah. and Colin, you're in Nashville for the most part. Well, you know, really, we've spent 
most of our career living in other places. Very I mean, I've been cities. in Nashville 22 years. You went before to Victoria, Halifax. you were yeah. in Halifax in yeah. 06? Yeah, yeah. So, 06, 07. Tom's really? in Hamilton? Yeah. Tom will always... I'm back in Hamilton. I'm <laughs> staying in Hamilton. You know, well, we live so far away, As this is Colin's quote, we live so far away from each other so that we cannot have a chance of ever making any money. I think we're doing well. <laughs> is it is it good for the creative process, though? Like, is it is it good to put those kind of stakes that when you do get together, geez, we only got three days, or we only got five days, and we're not going to see each other after that for maybe a couple of months. Does it sort of focus the the effort? I don't know about that, actually. I mean, historically, it's been okay that way. I find that the more we're in each other's faces, you know, I feel like it's closer now in some ways to being... I mean, it's always on my mind. I'm not somebody who leaves it behind. And mm -hmm. so if I come up with a song that I'm making up that seems like it's a Blackie and the Rodeo King song, I'm it's going to be a Blackie and the Rodeo King song as long as everybody else is cool with it. And so it... Uh, it's nice to be able to be in each other's faces more. I want to play more. I mean, mm -hmm. if not now, when? You know. You're um. You made this record where? My studio. Yeah, his beautiful studio that he. My just wife built. built. My wife built. Yeah. Built us a studio in Nashville. In Nashville, and the litmus test for it was, can we make a Blackie and the Rodeo Kings record there? And uh, Johnny Diamond and Gary Craig both really helped us kind of get the space right. But really, it was my wife, whose name is Janice Marion Curry Alexander Powers. Powers. Uh, powers, yes. Close to me. Close oh, to yeah. me. Yeah, Somebody yeah. just added an S. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're definitely can't know that about it. Uh, East Coast. Yeah, and uh, although her family, the power side, is more from Ontario, but uh, uh, we did it top to tail at the studio, and it, everything that we had thought of in terms of designing it and coming up with it was with this band in mind. We, we built a special room for Steven. We only padded a few of the... Uh, a, f a few of the walls on it, was, <laughs> so he could bang his head uh, I there. Mean, I can lie down there too. There's a and bed in it. We oh did, yeah, we didn't get we it. didn't get the padlock, so we could lock him in. Or, but he found a way of locking himself in yes. pretty well. Yeah. So that, that's you know, the dream. That's that's how yeah. to be in a band. I think yeah. just find a place where you can lock yourself out. So for the rest no, of the band thank members. you for asking that because it was really uh, you know we just thought at some point, uh, at some point. Mm, People may not want to let us make records, so that if we have a place to make records, no matter what, that but I, means a lot. But I and see, then Warner comes in. I can see the challenge, right? Though, because I feel like you know, going to Nashville, where a lot of people have gone to make records, and of course, no disrespect to any of them, because God knows I've I've done it too. But I see you guys as such a beautiful kind of like uh, um, representative of the unheralded Canadian scene. You know what I mean? Whether it was Willie P or you know your cover of Down by the Henry Moore, which I always really loved. It was always a way of. I always felt like you guys were kind of planting a flag, whether this is not nationally and not jingoistically, mm -hmm. but planting a flag and going, like, hey, look, look what's going on up here. Mm -hmm. So I understand that that might have been a challenge I think, for I think you guys. The, uh, I think the best f flags that can be uh, stuck in the ground are ones that are uh, spurred on by the desire to keep creating mm -hmm. and to keep going and to keep getting better. And I, I, I never would have said that as a young man, but I'm 60 years old now, and I just want to keep getting better. I want to write... Yeah. better songs i want to write better books i want to paint my master all that stuff and that's an important time in our lives so that is how it's always been colin linden taught me that and this is a band that has never had any hits on the radio yet somehow we get to play beautiful halls like massey mm -hmm. hall mm -hmm. and the nac and and across the country like that we're very very fortunate tom because we didn't come to any kind of little bit of success that we have in the con in this country in the world by a lot of radio airplay or or hype you know except for these jackets that we're wearing which is you know <laughs> and we're still working to pay yeah. by yeah. the way yeah. Yeah, yeah, you come. know the, the thing is in terms of the planting of the flag we we were mentored by i mean will and and all the the other singer songwriters who you mentioned and bruce coburn of course and uh we we came up during a great period of time of music in Canada, and those the 1970s was a fantastic time, and that's when we were kids and just starting to get out and play and be interested in it. And we were younger than most of the guys who were, you know, do, doing the scene at that time. But that music is still so good. It was mm -hmm. it had a uniqueness that was not. It was reflective of music from other places, but it was also something very unique to hear. Yeah, and that helped us. 
that's what we loved. That's what we wanted to honor. So yeah, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't a big deal. We we're just doing the music we love. Uh, yeah, I think the better maybe the better way to put it. And, and Stephen, this is someone I think about you is that like. Tom said you didn't get radio airplay, but you can do these kind of gigantic halls and, and have, a, have a career and, and do well. And I think that's, not to be uh, cheesy here, but that's because of the strength of just songs. Like, great songs can do that, you know? I believe so. I mean, it's a funny time for songs, um, but I really believe it. And, and there was a point for me, and, and definitely being in this band was a real key element in going from thinking of myself as a singer-songwriter to thinking of myself as a songwriter. And that that's a, it's a fine hair to split, but you know, when you realize that Johnny Cash did not actually shoot a man in Reno just to watch him die, and you go, okay, I don't have to constantly be trolling through the singer-songwriter book. And then the whole world of that, of songwriting opens up. And that for me was a real key thing that I've gotten from these two guys. I'm excited for you guys to hear, play some more music. Before you do, though, I owe Colin an apology. Uh-oh. I owe Colin an apology. Then I, get on with it. I <laughs> said I said on the air after the Grammys that mm -hmm. Canadians were shut out of the Grammys this year. Not one Canadian took home a Grammy. Uh -huh. I was wrong. You were wrong. Colin yeah. took home a Grammy as part of your work on Kebmo's record. Yeah, from Oklahoma. that same studio that we worked at. Oh, no way. Yeah, some of it. Yeah. I apologize. I apology accepted. And congratulations, and, man. And, I, and by the way, when it was going on, I had no idea that I was the only Canadian who won. But FYI Magazine, right? That's Canadian... Yeah, Carrie, yeah. uh, Carrie, uh, Carrie Duell, yeah, yeah. Uh, just pointed it out, put it as the headline of a that that I that uh, that uh, me getting a Grammy saved Canada for a big shutout this year. <laughs> well, yeah, so man. I kind of feel like I've never gotten a shutout at anything, you know. <laughs> so uh, uh, I was happy to to do that. I was happy you Thank took you. it home, and you have a legion of of online fans who let me know pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, okay. And it wasn't just my brother? No, it was not. It was not just your brother. Guys, thanks for coming and you're going to do another Thank song. You, Tom. What's, yeah. what's it going to be? For having us, Tom. King of this town? King of yeah. this town. King of this town. Tell, me, tell me about it. King of this town I made up with my wife, Janice Marion Curry Alexander Powers. I like Studio it Studio designer, production assistant on this record, and uh, my wife for the last... 32 years and we've lived together for the last 37 years almost and uh she came up with the idea the title and the idea and the beginning of it and i thought this is i really liked it and i kind of thought that sometimes you know you don't get to fulfill your dreams the way that you thought you might have a chance i mean we've been playing music since we were kids and you know tom was the next big thing 30 years ago and <laughs> And, uh, you know, we've all had, you know, sort of our brushes with it all and just kept doing it because we love doing it. And uh, sometimes you don't fulfill those dreams exactly how or when you think that you might, but you still can. And uh, that's what it's. Congratulations on 25 years, guys.